Uh, good afternoon, church. Tapos ba kayo sa pagkain? How about sa message this morning? Are you blessed? Okay, thank you. I would like to uh, to uh, magsita yung po tayo na to uh, stand on our feet and open our Bible to the book of First John chapter 1. We're going to get the entire uh, chapter. This is just uh, 10 verses, so uh, we're going to uh, read it simultaneously. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 1 verse 1, let's read. Begin. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, and declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father, and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write unto you, that your joy may be full. This is the message which I have heard of Him, and they declare unto you, that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him, and we walk darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, and He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not with us. Praise be the Lord. Sa kanyang salita, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Grace God, we thank you for this uh, message uh, that you're going to uh, teach us. Lord, uh, we're praying that you may guide us uh, this entire doctrine class. The Lord may use me uh, to teach only your word, O God. And dear Holy Spirit, we're asking for your guidance once again. To be with us for us to understand more the word of God. All this we're praying in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's all be seated. Uh, do we still have our visitor, right? Can you please raise up your hands? Our visitors, our African brothers, you still here, right? Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for uh, staying this long for our walking class. I hope uh, you will be blessed because this one is a uh, very, uh, what I found, but uh, our Lord God uh, told me to teach to you this afternoon. So we're going to discuss about the fellowship of God. And uh, before I begin with this one, uh, I'd like to tell you a story that there's a, a certain uh, baby girl. I can relate to this because uh, my daughter is in the Philippines. And this little girl is together with her mom. And, uh, and she told that, and, 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 his, and her dad is uh, working abroad. So I can relate. So she saw that picture and, and she told her, uh, her mom that, uh, I want daddy to come out of that picture. I want to be uh, with us. I want my daddy to be uh, alive with us today. Well, he is still alive, but uh, unfortunately, he's in abroad. He just, she, uh, this little girl just uh, wanted her father to be with her, to be alive. Now, my question to you, my question to you for all of us, what is God, is it, it is God will to us? Is it God will to you? Just like the picture on the wall, just like uh, this uh, little girl uh, told her mom. Or he is just a picture on the wall. Or something that uh, we just adopt in, or uh, something, a verse that we look upon on our walls. We, we, print, we print it so that we can see this marvelous verse. Or uh, or someone else who is wonderful. Or or is God uh, a good, or, or is God has a good relationship with us? And vice versa. That's a very good question uh, to ask because uh, this is a very personal, personal one. Is God real to you? Toto bang mong kami sa buhay natin? Do we have a personal relationship with God? If some people ask me, what is my religion? I would like rather say relationship. I would not say religion because uh, this one comes by so, so many laws like that. But when it comes to religion, uh, to relation, this is more deeper relationship. 
just like a father to a son or vice versa. We're talking about relationship. And God longs to have relationship with us, to His people, to His sons and daughters. And we can see this uh, in the entire Bible, how God reaches to us. Amen? Even the Old Testament, kahit pasaway yung mga Israelite, there, God is still there. Because God has a, I don't know, it's an infinite uh, patience, what you call this, uh, patience. Patience. Ganun na lang ang patience ng Panginoon sa atin. And God is reaching, uh, reaching always to us. Now, uh, our topic now is uh, a fellowship. There's a term. Uh, there's a term that we uh, we always hear in a Christian circles, and I'm afraid that uh, we know uh, a little something about it. But the uh, term fellowship to most Christians is like uh, going to some dinner or uh, going to some uh, breakfast and talking about each other's life. We go sa tayo to sa ating jobs, sa ating relationships, sa ating family. Well, uh, that's part of a Christian life. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not all the fellowship means. Because uh, when it comes to... Uh, because, because when it comes to fellowship, this one has a very deep meaning. When it comes to a biblical meaning. The Greek word of fellowship is coming from the word koinonia. The idea behind this word is a common sharing. Which includes sharing socially, communitatively, communicatively, sympathetically and contributedly. Fellowship in biblical speaking is more partnership, more than companionship, it's a mutual joint sharing. There's a deeper relationship when it comes to fellowship in Christian, in Christian life. Now, the Church of God is to be a place of fellowship. Amen? This is to be the place where God's people share life with fellow believers. And we will have fellowship with God and, with each other, and together with each other. We are to have a communion with God and with each other and to each other. And the church is to be a family in order for us to have that kingship. In order for us to have, to, to have a right relationship, there must be a fellowship with God. So between us, uh, our fellowship, lagi kasama ang Panginoon. Just like a relationship. I remember Pastor John told us before, the relationship is uh, uh, between man and wife. It's like a love triangle. First you have the God, and then you have the uh, husband and wife. The closer you are close to God, you are both closer to, together. But you are farther, farther away from God, you are closer to, to each other. So this is what, uh, what I'm talking about. A Panginoon is dapat is always in between our lives. Not just uh, talking our lives, uh, pinag-usapan natin yung buhay natin, uh, we talk, we share our lives, but most important of all, our Lord Jesus Christ should be in the midst of us. Amen? First, we must know the points in understanding the fellowship. Number one, in your notes, the source of fellowship. The Apostle John speaks about fellowship in verse 3. I'll read it to you. That which we have seen and heard and declare we unto you that you might also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with, son, with His Son, Jesus Christ. And question, and then they answer, to whom we have fellowship with? To our Father and to His Son, Jesus Christ. So, makikita natin yun dito in verse 3. During the time when Jesus Christ walked uh, walk in this earth, there's a passage in John chapter 14 where, where Philip asked about uh, to show us the Father's heaven, tinanong na kay Jesus Christo. Because Jesus Christ most of the time talks about His Father. And they're very curious about it because they have a physical uh, fellowship with Jesus Christ in the physical, but they haven't seen the Father. But what he said here in verse in chapter 14, verse 7 in John, If you had known me, you should know my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him, and seen and have seen him. So we can see here that Jesus is declaring that he and Father is one. Amen? Jesus is the word of life who was from the beginning. And we can read this one in verse 1. We can see that the, 
we can see that Jesus has no beginning because He is eternal. Eternal has no uh, beginning or end, just, just like a circle. You might know where is the beginning or ending. This is a mystery. That's something uh, we must uh, to understand. In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, this is a wonderful, wonderful verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made, was made. So we can see here that the beginning is the Word. See the Word that by who's the Word? It's been talked about here. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He is the Word of life. Jesus did have a beginning also when He was born in this earth. Yun yung lagi natin tinatalakay kanina. In John chapter 1 verse 14, And the Word was made flesh. Sino yun? Si Lord Jesus Christ. And dwelt among us. And we held his glory and the glory of and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. So there's another source that uh, we can know that where we have this fellowship uh, na natin. Letter B is, is the witnesses, John's eyewitness account. John's eyewitness account of what we heard and seen by himself. We have to understand that uh, the Biblical Christianity is based on historical fact. That there were eyewitness who lived the history, who saw it, and wrote about it. And one of those eyewitness, eyewitnesses is John. And we can say that, that he wrote this epistle that because he is the witness of himself. Because this is one of the most important for us to know that uh, for us to believe, there must be an eyewitness. And this one has been proven many times. In both in historical facts. So, in our life, we may not see Jesus physically, just like what uh, happened a uh, thousand years ago. But we, will, uh, but we can experience Jesus himself through his preserved word. That's why we have this Bible today. This is the only... Uh, this is the only Bible that has been uh, preserved all throughout the years. And uh, I don't know if you can name some, some book that has survived for the past centuries. I don't think so. That's why this is the promise of God that He will keep His word, He will preserve His word. And that's why we have this fellowship with Him. Otherwise, we will not, be, we will not know the truth. And this is a miracle itself. Number two in your notes, the need of fellowship. The need of fellowship. And we can read this in verse 3 to 5 in our main text. Earlier we mentioned what is fellowship. Biblically speaking, it is more partnership, more companionship, and has a deeper relationship together with God. Hindi dapat pwedeng mawala ang Panginoon niya. Amen? Hindi po pwedeng kay kailang. Otherwise, it's just a ordinary communication. An ordinary na nakikisama tayo. The question here is, why do we need fellowship? Why do we need fellowship? Bakit natin kailangan ng fellowship? Minsan, natanong na natin siya sa ating sarili. Back in Philippines, when I was uh, wala pa sa Panginoon, I just go to the church and that's it. And then after that, I go back to my own business. See, what happened here is that uh, if we don't have fellowship, we will not grow in faith. We will not grow in faith. After this uh, Friday, when we go back to our work, respective work, then uh, we will uh, encounter most of our friends, which are uh, unfortunately uh, non-believers. And you know what I mean? Because all of us here who are working uh, are been exposed to them. So first and foremost, it is hindi masama na we have to uh, commune with them, to, uh, to uh, work with them or to have some uh, friendship with them. As a Christian, you as Dapat i-invite natin sila sa church. That's the something that we uh, we ought to do. And this passage reminds us that we should have fellowship for our fellow believers, for our fellow Christians. Here in this passage, you can see John's desire for us to have fellowship with them. He would like to, uh, to the leader of this epistle to have fellowship with them. Because John's account, they knew that uh, we have a uh, good fellowship with God. If we're going to ask ourselves, who should we have fellowship with? 
Kanina ba dapat na nakikipag-fellowship? But those people who have shared the same faith. The closeness of a relationship leads to learn to one another. This is something I like uh, having uh, some of our uh, mature Christian here. You will learn from them. Not just from the teaching or not just from the preaching, but along the way, if you're with them, you will learn from them. Amen? Because if we're going to uh, go mostly of our worldly friends, we will not learn anything other than worldly things. And this is reality. And then we are all exposed about it. If we're not, if we're not going to keep our guard uh, focused on the Word of God, we will lose our way. We will lose our way. But if we have fellowship with mature believers, definitely we will, we will learn more. Amen? So, in letter B, we have a, there's a joy desire. We can, we can see this uh, in verse 4. Let me ask you a question. Saan natin nakapuha yung joy? Where do we get this joy? Joy from a relationship? Joy from a possession? Ano pa? Anything? A joy from a... That's it? Dalawa lang ba? Only two? But in a Christian life, we have this very special joy. We have this very special joy. This joy comes from the, from the fruit of the Spirit. Comes from the fruit of the Spirit. And we can read this one in Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is... Sino makaka-decide? For the fruit of the Spirit is... Love, peace, love, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against their such no law. There is nothing more joyful na, that we can share the word of God. Especially when they come to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. If you're going to think about it, it's a soul. A soul that which is supposed to be bound into hell. But God used you. God used us to share His word. There's nothing more joyful than, than doing than sharing the word of God to others. Let us see. Uh, there's uh, there's a uh, light versus the, the versus the darkness. There's a question here. Who is the light? We know that Jesus Christ is the light. And there are several verses in the Bible that uh, mention Jesus Christ is the light. Many times, over and over again. I'll just uh, name you one. In John chapter eight, verse. John chapter 8, verses 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen? There's another passage in John chapter, John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. And this is the condemnation that light comes into the world, and when men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. This is very really true. Do you wonder why people don't want to come to, to Jesus Christ? Because their deeds is evil. And same thing to us when we, we drifted. Sometimes it's really hard. It is really hard. I'm telling you, I've uh, uh, been uh, for many years in this faith. Sometimes we drift. And we experience things. Even... Uh, even uh, the most mature one. I don't know if you're going, if you're not experiencing it, but I'm telling you this. I'm telling you that this, that uh, sometimes uh, we don't want to approach God when we have some problems. Because sometimes we've been overcome. Why? Because we lack fellowship. There's nothing wrong uh, going to a friend. But first, if we have this problem, we must practice ourselves to, to commune with God first. Then for our fellow believers, Rather than going to a, a worldly friend that will give you otherwise a very different, uh, a different, uh, na, 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 they will divert you from the truth. They will just tell you, follow your heart. Something like that. And we will talk about that later. So there is no fellowship between light and darkness. For God is the light himself. And in him there is no darkness. We can read that in verse 5. Speaking of light, there's a story that uh, there was a certain man who's uh, going, an adventurer, 
And then until uh, there's a huge storm came in and they need to uh, hide for a small cave and it's getting dark. So he went into that cave and then when he lighted his torch, he saw a lot of uh, creepy things. He saw a snake, he saw a bear, bat, something like that, and he simply ran away. Why? Because of this light. And without this light, we can never see this evil in our lives. If we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our life, we can see all these things. And you will be wise enough to go away with that one. Amen? So, we need to remind also that there's a need for other uh, fellow believers who are, who, uh, who are directing. Our fellow believers, let's make this uh, a practice to ourselves. If you're not, you're not seeing anyone attending the church, or not seeing them for a long time, maybe they're busy, they're in the work, make them a call. Tawagan natin sila. Give them a call. If everything is still going, fine with them. You know what? They need a fellowship. If you have a time to visit them, please do so. Make a simple message to know that, they, that you are still there. Not just uh, an ordinary uh, a church going with this fellowship when we're here in church. Then uh, we, should, uh, we should practice also that once we're out of church, we're looking for other lost by the men's. Especially for our visitors. And now for our visitors, we would like you to, uh, to see you next week. Because uh, we would like to have fellowship with you. And for us, our fellow believers, uh, most older in faith, let's not just concentrate on uh, our secular friends. Let's try to expand. Let's try to expand. Hindi lang yung portion ng mga BFF. Then, hiwalay dito, hiwalay dito. There's nothing wrong with that, but let us try to expand our uh, reach to other fellow new believers in faith. Amen? So let's do that. Number three and lastly, the hindrance of fellowship. And we can read this in verse 6 to 10. Yung binasa natin kanina. The number one source of hindrance of our sin, of our fellowship, is our sin. Bakit tayo, we lose our communication, our fellowship with God is because of our sin. Nothing more, nothing less. Because of our sin. The very thing happened in the Garden of Eden when uh, Adam and Eve commit this sin, it jeopardized everything. Can you imagine? Our uh, Lord God is walking with them literally in the Garden. So because of this sin, everything is in chaos. Because of our sin today, I don't know about you if, if uh, how many sin we commit every day. So we need to be uh, more careful about this. We, we need to be more sensitive about our sin. In Psalms chapter 66, verse 18, and if, it were, and if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It is true. I don't know about you, but uh, if I am unconfessing and I pray to God, I doubt He will hear me. Never. Hindi talaga. And uh, I cannot even make a prayer when I'm eating my food. I'm saying grace. I cannot even say it. I have to confess this first. We have to confess our sins. Then we do not have fellowship with God. And if we walk in darkness, then we are liar, according to verse 6. Questions, what do we mean by walking in darkness? Walking in darkness. Walking in darkness is a continual or habitual committing of sin. This is what we call the, hindi na baby natin sin, baby sin. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, yung uh, hidden sin. A sin that uh, bine baby natin that we've been hiding all day long. Question is, do we have those kind of sin? Are we, work, uh, are we walking in darkness? Are we walking in darkness? I'm not saying I'm right. Ako'y makasalanan, really. You see, it's a for me to teach the word of God. Ang kung unang may nabugbog dito, ako yun. <laughs> it is me. And I'm very uh, ashamed about God na I tell him that I have to teach this. I have to teach myself first before I teach this. This is something very hard. But if you have this conviction from the Holy Spirit every time you committed sin, you are broken. You are broken. You're feeling guilty and ashamed. And you confess that to the Lord. This is what we ought to do. Question is, when you commit sin, how do you feel? How do you feel? Okay lang ba? Okay lang. Oh, God will forgive me. 
I just need time to concentrate in after that. If I get so uh, quiet, then I will ask forgiveness. No, you should be broken. If you commit such thing, if you commit some sins, we feel guilty about it. We will be ashamed to our father. Imagine your father is the Lord God. And we are his sons and daughters. And you commit the sin. We should be careful about this one. And something that uh, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 is to remind us that the flesh does it against spirit and the spirit against flesh. Which this is contrary to one another so that he cannot do the things that he would. The number one of the uh, problem is the lust of the, lust, lust of the flesh. It doesn't mean just uh, a sexual lust thing but there's a lust that uh, we need to uh, have something. We lost on some other things. And this is something that uh, we lose our fellowship with God. Because it says it in verse 17 that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. It is true. For us, for us guys and for the ladies, I'm telling you this. That's why it's being repeated here in uh, Belay Baptist Church to be modest in our apartment. We are just men. We are just men. I'm telling you, we are just men. I am a married man. Yes, I am. But sometimes we get to attend, get the attention of our other uh, ladies that uh, who is being exposed. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this with brother Bilal. Please be careful with this one. Because as a man, the devil always tells us, look at that. Wow. And we uh, something like that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you this as a man. I'm not immune to this. I hope I'm not, but we are. I don't know, I don't know about you. If you're not so sacred, I, I doubt. So this is we need to be careful about this. We need to be, uh, we need to be uh, cautious about what we dress. We need, we need to be dressed modestly. Let it be, if we walk in right, we have fellowship with one another. Then our sins has been blessed by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and we can read this in verse 7 if we only confess our sin and if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves I remember last time uh, when, I talk, when I'm sharing uh, to others the word of God they told me they don't, they don't have sin and I was wondering what? <laughs> you don't have sin? Ah, and then what's the, the, need, the need of this one? maybe uh, may halo yata siyang ganun o ano, ang hell yata siyang Hindi naman siya nakakasala because he didn't kill anyone. So his basis of, uh, of sin is not killing anyone and not committing adultery. Oh, he, he never touched any woman. Oh, I tell you, but if he lost a woman, he committed adultery. Amen? So you are adultery. Oh, adultery. Adultery. So this is something that we should be uh, remindful of. We put some several uh, verses there. We have some several uh, verses to uh, support this account in Jeremiah 79. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So don't listen to anyone who tell you about follow your heart. No. Ladies, do not follow your heart. Do not follow your heart. The word of God, the word of God is true. It's being so true about this. That our heart is wicked. Not our liver, not our stomach, not our intestine, but our heart is wicked. In Romans 3.10, we know it, it is written that none is righteous, no, not one. John chapter, uh, Romans 3.23, for all of sin and for short, the glory of God. Romans 7, 18 to 20. For I know that in, that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good, no good things. For two is will present to me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good I would not, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do what I would not, it's not but, uh, more what I do, but it's the sin that dwells in me. I'm telling you, this is a fact we start to this. I'll be honest with you this one. This is uh, Apostle was talking about this is a giant in faith. And he can, he can do things that uh, he cannot do. Pero yung mga, mga bagay na hindi dapat niya ginagawa niya, how much more be? So, 
this passage reminds us that we are a very frail person. That we are all, uh, uh, we are all uh, exposed to such sins. Then the truth is not in us. Sin is universal. We are all sinners. Sin is attractive. May sin bang uh, destructive? Sin comes in very shape, different uh, shape or form. Sa mga singles, ha? Nagpagulungan na doon, di ba? Oh, so to our singles, it is attractive. But uh, once, uh, but once we uh, bite on that one, then uh, we didn't know uh, Asawa na pala. So it's a very uh, big problem. Especially sa may mga asawa who is, uh, who is single here but married in Philippines. Be careful about this. Amen. Be careful. Ang daming umuwing lukaan. Paligun niya nga lang yan. <laughs> diba? It will come to pass. It will come to pass but since it comes in a very attractive way. We need to be uh, reminded about, th about this one. Let me if we confess our sin, not just a general but a specific one. It's a specific one. Jesus is faithful to forgive us. What I'm saying here, if we're going to confess our sin, not just the sin in general, we need to be more specific. We need to pinpoint the exact sin that you have committed and tell that to our Lord. Only then He will disagree. There was a story, uh, an old story, I don't know if you know this. There's a, a farmer who uh, stole a goat, who is a fellow co-worker. And then after, after a few years, he went back and asked me for forgiveness. My friend, uh, I stole a goat when I was still working with you. And the other guy, it's okay, you're forgiven. Uh, I'm thankful that uh, you opened up with this man. There's, there's no worry, it's just a goat. I can forgive you. And then the one man departed and he's thinking, I still feel guilty. Maybe I should tell that guy that the end of the road, there was a cow. <laughs> uh, it's an old story, but <laughs> it's a uh, no. Uh, but what I'm telling here is that we should be more general. Uh, we should be more specific rather than being a general. Otherwise, God will not hear us, but uh, we need to be more specific with our problem. So, this, my friend, my, my dear beloved, this is the number one hindrance. When, uh, when it comes to our fellowship with our, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. In conclusion, we will not have real fellowship with the Lord if we live a lie. Living lie is the something that uh, we, we are unrepentant of. We, 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 will ask, we should ask this to our Lord that, to give us grace to live all these things. I'm telling you it's not easy to say because we're still living in flesh. There's a lot of things that our flesh desire. There's so many things. The only thing we can overcome this one is by asking God's grace. So fellowship with God requires that we should be a people of right, a people of truth, a people that will set the record straight. We know that, this, that God longs to have an intimate fellowship with us. He's been reaching out to us, even in the in the in the Bible, we can see how God is patiently reaching for us. And we are uh, so uh, distracted about these words, about the world that uh, we live in. We didn't know that uh, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, died for our sin. We should be more, more, uh, more open-minded when it comes to uh, reading the Word of God, that someone is reaching for us. This is, this is God Himself the creator of the universe, who is reaching for us. First, we, we, uh, we need to also recognize that God is holy, and we are not. We can never have uh, a good fellowship with Him, but we can have a fellowship here to our Lord Jesus Christ. Only then we can have a fellowship to Him. In Psalms 51.3, before I close, 51, uh, Psalms 51.3, before I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sins is ever before me. And my sin is ever before me. Only if we're going to accept that we are sinners. Not just a general sin, but a specific one. And if you do that, my friend, then we can restore our fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope, uh, dearly beloved, that you learned something from this afternoon. And I hope and pray that we should reach to one another, especially for our, our dearly Beloved, sa which uh, hindi na natin nakikita dito sa church. Our church, that uh, our brethren that uh, needs us. 
This one's a help for the needy. It's not just a, a, a monetary needy, but a spiritual needy. A spiritual friendship that we need to reach them in, uh, to continue them in uh, our uh, uh, with our Lord Jesus Christ.